going here in just a minute. Right. Uh, we're going to go live on Facebook. Something's wrong here. Hello, if you're joining us on Facebook, we'll be with you in just a minute. We're Wave Talkers, and we're going to go live on LinkedIn. There we go. Title Digipeding. Hello, if you're joining us on LinkedIn. And let me see if I can push the button to go live on our actual Wave Talkers channel. There we go. We are live all over the planet now, including all of us who are here inside of the Zoom session. So thank you everyone for joining us. I'm Chris Mattia, Whiskey Six Alpha Hotel. I am joined by my esteemed colleagues, uh, David KK6DA, David W0DHG, and Dan NR6V. And his, his uh, middle name is David. You're kidding me. Really? No. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. that's, that. I'm just surrounded by Davids right now. Okay. So, uh, so today on, uh, on Wave Talkers, we're going to be talking about digipeding. And uh, we're going to go into that in just a, just a few minutes. Uh, but we'll do our normal check-in thing. So if you have access to WayneLink and you already have it set up, go ahead and send us a WinLink check-in, use the standard WinLink check-in form. And uh, you want to send it to all four of us, KK6DA, W0DHG, NR6V, and W6AH, and also send it to our tactical call, Wave Talkers, that we, be, uh, we all get it into, into one location. And uh, use the standard WinLink check-in form. I'll walk through that process here in just a, just a quick second with you. And um, let us know in the comments section of that uh, form, uh, have you ever operated your radio in the field? Uh, if so, tell us about it. Um, do you do you just operate, uh, you know, periodically go outside and set up? Do you do POTA, SODA? Um, do you do uh, field day? You know, tell us about uh, operating out in the field. Public service. Public service, all, all of those fun things. Um, and so let me walk through that process real quick. I'm going to switch over very briefly to my little PC that I've got here. Uh, this is my Surface Go. I love this thing. It's really awesome. Um, all you need to do to send the check-in form, just come up here, click a new message. Uh, in the to field, you can put all of our call signs and that Wave Talkers link. Just separate them with a, with a colon. And then uh, go up here to select template. Click on that. Come down to standard templates. I come down here. Here's We'll go into the mapping GIS forms, and it's right there, the win link checkin.txt. Just go ahead and give that a double click. And there you go. Your, your form comes up, fill in all the information in here. And if you come down to the bottom, this is that comment section. That's where you would want to enter in. Uh, let us know about, uh, have you ever operated your radio out in the field? And just kind of tell us about it. Uh, yeah, well, one of us will go ahead and type in the list of all of our call signs there in the, in the chat for you. So let me do some spotlight removal uh, neatness here. I wish there was one button that just says remove all spotlights, but this one, that would be a great feature inside of here. So once you go ahead and fill out this uh, form, you just hit the submit button. Um, your browser kind of turns blank. It doesn't look like anything has happened, uh, but you can then at that point just minimize this. It would fill all that information here into the message. And then just go ahead and post that message to your outbox and send it to us via your favorite method of uh, checking in via WinLink. Uh, we really suggest since you're all here and watching us live, then uh, go ahead and use the Telnet feature because it's super fast and, and easy and you've got access to it. So um, go ahead and do that. What I want to talk about and, and what we're all going to talk about today is digipeding. And let's let's walk through a little scenario here real quick. Um, I'm going to bring up my browser. And I've got, just like any good cooking show, I've already gone ahead and pre-baked this a little bit. I've opened up to the winlink.org website. And when you're on winlink.org, if you haven't played with it, check this out. Go click on the tools link. And when you click on tools, it brings you to this map and you can see where all the different gateways are all around the world. And there's this little row of radio buttons that's right here at the top. And we're gonna demonstrate with VARA FM. So you just go ahead and click on VARA FM. And if the demo gods are with us, boom, it, it refreshes. 
And it shows you where all of those gateways are all over the world that support Vara FM. Now, this is kind of fun. I'm just going to go ahead and double click a few times to zoom in on the map. There's gateways all over the place, but we're here in Southern California. And if we zoom right down on the map at about this location, you can see here I am. This is W6AH-10. That's my gateway. Um, up here, this is Rob W6RH. He's the emergency coordinator in Ventura County. We come down a little bit further. We've got this little cluster here that looks like W0DHG-12. Uh, w There's also his dash 10 and dash 11. He's got a nice little cluster of gateways there. Um, up here, I believe this is Dan. Yeah, there we are. NR6V. And we've got a few other gateways that are kind of scattered around the area. So let's say you're in a situation where you happen to be inside of the disaster zone. Let's say I'm, I'm here in Ventura County and we have a big major fire or something's going on that our internet is completely down in this zone. How do I get my traffic out? Now, one option is certainly to use HF and to send that message out of area using uh, high frequency um, and get it out. But if I, I can only reach a couple of gateways, I can reach my own gateway here, I can reach Rob's gateway, but that's about it. That's all I have access to on, on VARA FM. Now I could change the map and look for other types of communication. So other types of connections, I could maybe look at a uh, packet and see if there's a packet station I could get that could, I could get the message out to. But let's say in your area, the internet's completely down. So my gateway has no internet. Rob's gateway has no internet. But I know that I'm, I'm pretty sure that Dan over here in the San Fernando Valley, I'm pretty sure his gateway is, is up and running. So what we would want to do in that case is we want to use what's called digipeding. You want to send your traffic so it goes from one station to another, to another, to another. And you do that just with a, a little bit of configuration of both your own setup for, for um, both VARA and for WinLink, as well as having the other stations that are configured. So we're gonna walk through how we would accomplish this, uh, accomplish this task here. So let me switch back over to uh, the slides. There we go, there's the question one more time and it's got all of our call signs up there. And that's just for the regular uh, WinLink traffic message. So let me go ahead and uh, go over to the next one. Now, if you've been following along with us for a while here on Wave Talkers, you may recall this diagram. We use it pretty often because it just describes the, the kind of overall map of, of the world. Up at the top, we have this would be WinLink and the, the WinLink application. Uh, we can, of course, send our traffic via Telnet if we have an internet connection and that can go out through the internet and find its way to one of the other RMS gateways or radio message server gateways. You can also have your radio connected to WinLink to your computer and you can send your message out via RF. So if there is a RMS gateway that is within radio range of you, you can send your traffic to that gateway. And then that gateway is usually connected to the internet or it may have a connection to another gateway via RF as well. But what happens if this gateway, the one that we normally use, it's programmed in, you've got it set as a favorite, you use it all the time, it's your all the time go-to gateway. What if it doesn't have internet connectivity? What do you do? Well, in that case, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do what's called digipeding. And that's where you're gonna use your copy of WinLink to connect to your radio. And then your radio is gonna connect to some other station. Now that station might be a gateway, it might not. It can be completely ad hoc. And I'm gonna show you how to set up your copy of WinLink so you can uh, add to this whole process here and uh, become essentially a relay station. Uh, that station would then connect over to another RMS gateway. So. Or another, or another. Or another DHP or you know, or an, and another and another. Exactly, it just kind of keeps going on. Uh, so that's called digipeding. And the the trick to doing this digipeding thing is in the addresses that you have to assign. So oftentimes, if you think of of uh, of uh, APRS, a gateway 
and a gateway is one is a station that is connected to the internet. It's also called an eye gate. They have a couple of different terms for them. In the in the um, the framework that's used within APRS, which is pretty old framework, they use a dash ten as a suffix to, to the call sign. So that's where the gateway would be. It would come up here as a dash 10, and then you're gonna digipeat via or the station you're gonna go through. And oftentimes you're going through an individual station. You're not always necessarily going through a gateway. You're usually going through an individual and an individual usually is deemed as a dash zero, one, two, three, or four. Um, and that's all part of the, the APR setup. We're, we'll look at that in just a second. A lot of this is by convention. So there's not, at least that I'm aware of, a way to kind of just look up, say, okay, who's digipeating today? A lot of times you would use voice traffic to be able to help figure some of that information out. You may be on a net and you're you know, saying, hey, I'm gonna, I need to digipete. And everybody can say, okay, here's how we're going to do this. Um, let me show you what the what I'm talking about here. So if we go, if we plug those in at the end, so the the, the overall traffic pattern here would be call sign dash ten for the gateway, call sign dash four for the individual, and this is that uh, APRS uh, listing of a lot of the suffixes. And and you may have seen this before. These are the two that we're talking about here. The station through is a generic additional station, uh, gateway to that you're trying to go to is the gateway onto the internet. These usually is the one that has the connection out to the internet that you're, you're looking for. And Chris, there are just 10 of those, right? No, they <laughs> go, they go on. So Dave, you're, you're running dash 11, 11 12. dash 12. Yeah, oh, is, it goes. That, it goes. It goes higher than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but is that still gateway to internet by convention? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mike. Mike's got a comment. What's up, Mike? Winlink doesn't follow any convention. You can put whatever yeah. ID you wish. Yeah. So 40, 42 is going to be my next gateway. Yeah, <laughs> you only go up to fifteen. Oh, oh well. That, that was my question. <laughs> oh, I can't go. Yeah. I can't go to 50. Okay. So, and, and again, this is by convention. So for instance, my colleagues all operate in, in Los Angeles and in the, in Los Angeles, by convention, the gateways are all using a dash 10 for both their gateway. And if they're running a digipeter in Ventura County, the convention that, that our County follows is your gateways are dash 10 and your individual digipeters are dash four. So that's, the convention that we use. So you do have to kind of figure this out and, and kind of test it, make sure that you know how to how to make all this work. And we're yeah, gonna that's, that's true in Northeast also. Yeah, yeah. Every individual is dash four. And that's just a custom. We, we've just decided that right. dash four. So, so let me see, let me, let me advance here. So that's, that's the, what those two button that that's what those two fields are going to be. And we're going to look at where those are at uh, here in, in just a second. Uh, and in fact, that's kind of where we're at right now. So let's just remember that we're going to say the gateway is going to go to the dash 10 and the station through is going to be a dash four for the convention that we're going to use. So let, why, why is that important, Chris? Why is that important? Because without it, it no worky worky. Right. You, you, never, you never get to the CMS. You never get to the CMS. Yeah. No, right. you can you can do peer to peer. That's right. a different, but that's a different show. So so let me show you what I've got set up here. I have right now, I've got my uh I've got my Windows Surface uh go three, which has got my WinLink on it. And I'm gonna go actually I'm gonna do a, another Telnet connection session here and I'm gonna check my mail. Yeah, I, you're gonna I have a lot to stake before. Oh, look at that. I love you guys. I love you guys for doing your check-in. It's really awesome. That is just so I love seeing that. That's so cool. All right. This, this there are more a second for, for there are more. one more time. There we go. Come on down. Even more. It just otherwise it's not gonna be fun when I do this over actual RF. There we go. Oh, okay. Chris, how can we never ask why it does it like that? Why does what? How come you've never asked why does it spit them out in little bursts? Why does it spit them out in little bursts, Mike? I, I have been curious about that because I figured I would click it one time and they would all just come down, but it never does. And because it's based on radio protocol. If you're in the middle of the ocean, you don't want to have a 
45k message tie up the whole radio. So yeah. it's based on a numeric size. You might get 20 messages if you're very tiny. You might only get two or three. Interesting. Didn't know that. The the the, the wealth of knowledge here and the experience is just incredible. Look at that. One Some more in there. There's there's always one more. There's always one more thing. All right. So there we go. I've got all of those. Okay, so I want to send right now. I I, I desperately need to send KK6DA uh, a message. So I'm going to bring this up, and I'm going to say this is going to KK6DA, and I'm going to say send pizza. <laughs> so it's what we do. We are back to that. We are back to that all the time. So send pizza, and uh, I'm going to post that to my outbox. It's sitting right there in my outbox like we've normally seen. And instead of using Telnet, now I am connected uh, on my Microsoft Surface Go. I'm connected to my ICOM 705 that's here. And I really do have a little tiny antenna that's that's connected on here. Um, and I'm going to use my 705 because I am I am out and about um, and I, I need to I need to get some pizza in here and i'm going to use my 705 and i'm going to transmit to my gateway because i'm within radio range of my my gateway right now um but let's say for instance my gateway my internet is completely down but uh i want to check and see if if rob's gateway is is on because i know i can usually hit his gateway so let me come up here um I can't hit his gateway directly from where I happen to be right now. So that's why I got to do this little trick. So I'm going to jump back over to here and I'm going to click the drop down and I'm going to go to Vara FM because that's the mode that we're going to use. And uh, let's let's first just see if we can get him. So if we start over in Vara, this is a great way to kind of test this. If you start over in Vara, I'm going to go up here to settings. I'm going to go down to sound card. And it brings up the sound card settings. You've got the audio settings that you, you know you're connected to. There's this little ping here. We've seen this, this button before. We just click on the, the ping. And the ping has this whole string here. It's got connect with, and it's got via and via. So let's, let's first make sure I can get a connection to my own gateway. So I'm going to go here, and I, I know my gateway W6AH. And uh, I know that I have it set as a DigiPeter because it's a, a standard station there is dash four. I'm just going to click the little connect button and uh, let's see if that works. So I've got my radio. It's sending traffic. It comes back over here. Boom. I've got a good connection to my own gateway. Now, let's say I tried to send traffic. <laughs> it didn't go. That that gateway is off. It, it doesn't have a connection to the Internet. So let's try Rob. So now I instead of connecting with W6AH, I want to connect with W6RH and I want to check his gateway. His gateway is dash 10 and I want to see if I can get there. So I'm going to go from my 705. I'm going to go to my gateway, to my, my station that's set up here, which is W6AH dash four, because that's my personal station that's out there. And now I'm going to press the connection, the start ping and uh, we'll watch it go through. So I click, click start ping. You can see the traffic. I come back over to here. I can hear you here. We get, we get the, the response back. So that signal just went from my 705 to my station that's outside that's connected to the, the big antenna. I'm using on, on my 705 right now, by the way, if you look, I'm using only 10%. So I'm only using one watt. Uh, right here on the 705. Um, I could even battery. I could even go lower. Um, yeah, it's really conservative on the battery. It's not a far distance I'm having to transmit, by the way. Um, so that's that's getting over to Rob's gateway. I can now check and see, does Rob have a Digipeter running? So let me see if he's got his Digipeter. So I'm going to change his dash 10 to a dash 4. Remember, that's his individual station. So let me try that. I'm going to press the little connect button. Oops, go ahead. Sending the traffic. Here comes the response. Boom, I've got a great connection. So Rob does have his DigiPeter up and running. So let me see if I can get all the way we, to we Dan's did, gateway. We didn't see any of that, Chris. 
you did oh let me do that again let me switch back over here there we are thank you thank you for keeping me honest there yep hey, let me press that button again because so you saw the radio how what the radio did now let's do it here press the connect you hear it comes back in and there i've got a connection to rob's station that's running as a, a digipeter so now let's add dan so we got to move everybody down the chain a little bit so the station i want to connect with is nr6 v-10 that's dan's gateway and we could look it up inside of the windlink propagation tables and we can see that that's actually his gateway and i still need to first now we're now we're going through the chain as to where you're trying to get to. So the first station, I'm going from my 705. I have to first get to my bigger station, which is dash four. So W6AH dash four. And then I need to go through another digipeter. So here I'm going to go through W6RH, that's Rob, dash four. So I just did the test to make sure that I can do this hop. Now we're going to try and go from my 705 to my machine to Rob's and then out to Dan. Let's see if we get a connection. If the demo gods are with us. Come on, demo gods. It's waiting. Come on, no signal. Oh no, let me try one more time. Sometimes propagation is working, sometimes it's not. I can see it. Yeah, and you can see me in Woodland Hills. If it doesn't work to Dan, you can try to me. We'll try to you. All right. Up oh, there we yeah. go. So that time we got a connection. It's not a great connection, but it's a connection. Let's see if I can also hit uh, David W zero D H G. So now, now I'm just testing other gateways. Let me see who else I can get on this path. So now instead of uh, NR six V dash ten, let's see if we can get W zero D H G dash ten. Let's see if we can get him. Maybe, maybe. Get another response. There we go. Okay, you'd so be better you'd be better going to eleven or twelve. Okay, let's try it. Let's try eleven. Let's see if we can get eleven. So notice all we're doing right now is we're just we're just testing. We're just checking to see who we can hear and who can hear us on this chain. And we're doing this. It's really who who can hear and who can talk to Rob because that's the station that I'm now at. I've got a good connection to my station. I got a good connection to Rob. Now it's who can who can we get through that that Rob may have a connection. So I know we've got Dan. So let's go ahead and just do the, the connection to Dan here. So I'm going to back up one more time. NR6V-10. And let's uh, just double check it one more time. Make sure the demo gods are with us. There's the outgoing. Come on back in, please. There we go. Yeah, a signal of silver noise of 1.9. And you can see where those where those are coming back in. So the we, the signal is it's getting out to Dan good. It's just a little bit weak getting back to me. Um, but that's that's all working. And so W6AH-3, that's 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 my my 705. Where do you where do you check that at? Let me let me show you where that's at. So that's where that is. Let me close there. Let me close this. In your Vara FM, come up here to settings and you go to your Vara setup. When you click on Vara setup, when you when we first walk through that setup with you, that's where you put in what your Digipeter is. Now, my 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 bigger station, my home station, that's the one that's my dash four. I use dash three. For my little Microsoft Surface, because this is the one that I'm carrying around with me. It's not as it's not as the the kind of like normal machine I'm using all the time here from the base from from my from my main QTH. So I use Dash three for more and more portable, even further portable. Maybe I've got a you know a, a tablet or something connected. I might use a Dash two, but my main gateway. And actually, I, should, I think I can bring that up here. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can make that happen. Uh, that is on three. So here's actually my gate. Yeah, this is my gateway. Oops. And here's my VARA on there. So if I click on settings and I go to VARA settings, there's my dash four. So we can even watch this traffic 
uh, go through here. Let me uh, let me close this <laughs> and bring this up here so we can watch it go through my gate, go through my gateway here. All right, so on my laptop or on my, sorry, on my surface, I'm gonna just press that same ping test. So this is uh, connect with NR6V-10 via W6AH4-W6RH. So here we go. I'm pressing it on my laptop. Boom, that just went through the through my home station. It's going out to Rob and we should see it come right back through here. Hopefully if the demo gods are with us, no signal, of course. Uh, I'll try it again. I can hear it splatter, but I hear it. Yeah, we're getting we're getting rough propagation today. Yeah, I can see it on my constellation screen, but pretty minimal signal. Let me let me just take. Uh, how take about uh, how about a word? W six R H dash. Aren't we yeah, in the middle of some solar event? There is a little bit of a solar event. So here's what I just changed. I just changed this. So this is going to go from my 705. It's going to go to uh, W6H-4. Then it's just going to go to Rob. Uh, so let's say Rob has internet connection. So I'll, I'll do the connection. Um, I'll switch back over to the gateway. So this is my gateway. I'll, so we'll watch it go through. Come on. Goes out to Rob comes back through That's good. and comes right back to me Perfect. and there it is it's showing me that my my connection is good so i need to i need to get this traffic out so i we've done some testing we know now that i'm in the disaster zone but rob's not rob's gateway is working so let me get this message out through him because i i gotta get this pizza in at, at this point all right so i'm gonna close those windows and i'm we're on my regular copy of winley so this is my <clears throat> All right, so I've got my Vara FM. We've done all of that pushing buttons. Let me do a quick check and make sure I don't have any more check-ins coming in because there's always check-ins that come you in. You got a couple. You got a, yeah, a couple. There, there's a couple more. That's awesome. Thank you very much for checking in from Hawaii. It looks like uh, Bill. Yeah, hi, Bill. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. Okay, so. Uh, but, uh, oh, and I've, you know what? I've already sent that message now because I sent it out via Telnet. I oh, send... dear. Let me see uh -oh. if I got it. Let me, let me fix that here. KK6DA pizza. Yeah, and... I have it. All right. So now I'm just going to send you pizza because clearly I didn't get a response. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a, it was a long weekend. Yeah. Which is, why, which is why I didn't get the email out to everybody. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to open up Vara FM. Another copy of Vara is already running. That's right. Because it's already sitting there. Okay. So Vara is running. This is the normal way you send traffic via Vara, right? You just come in here. You do your channel selection. You select a channel. I know I can hit W6AH-10 because that's my own gateway. I'd send traffic through there. But I find out that 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 station, no internet, but Rob does. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come down here and on the connection for direct, click the drop down for that. And notice right there, it says Digipeter. Digipeter, you gotta change this to Digipeter. And now it changes this top line here so that it matches the top line of where you're trying to, to go, what you're trying to do. So instead of going to W6AH-10, I want to go to W6RH-10. I want to go to Rob's gateway because I know he's got an internet connection and I know I can hit him. And I'm going to go via my, my bigger station that's running as a digipeter. So W6AH-4. So this is the chain that it's going to go. It's going to, uh, it's going to destinate to this gateway, but it's got to go via this station it's got the frequency all that set up right so let's see if we can make this work i'm going to press start and i'm going to quickly switch over to my gateway so start we can see the traffic is originating here this is my gateway now it's you can see the traffic going through my gateway here's the traffic going out of my surface and then if I come over here, there's the 705, and you can see this is the station that's doing the, the transmission. So it's going 
from the surface into the 705, it's going via Wi-Fi or via um, RF up to my gateway, which is here. There you go. Look at that. It's passing that traffic through. And you can even see right down here in the in the signal chain at the bottom, it's showing you W6AH is connecting to W6AH-4 and sending its traffic to W6RH-10. It's doing that whole path to send that message out. And it's giving me a little, a little message. There's a couple of more messages that have come in. Sure, what the heck, I'll go ahead and download those via, via VARA. We can watch that come in. And it's even pulling this traffic down via all of those um, through that whole signal chain. And it, it always shows you right here at the bottom of the VARA window where that is and showing you the speed. Look at that, that's a pretty good connection. Pretty fancy. If I switch over to the gateway, there you go. There you can see the traffic going through my actual gateway as well. So this is an incredibly flexible way of being able to get your traffic to pass from one zone or one area that you've got and use the, the different stations along the way as, as digipeters. Now, if you wanna have your own station to be able to operate as a digipeter, it's super easy. All you gotta do is open up your copy of VARA FM. Let's see which one am I on? I'm on this mouse here. Open up your copy of RFM, go to the settings, go here to VARA setup, and then you just enter in your digipeter. So for the most part, for your for your main station that you've got at your, your main QTH, it would be your call sign dash four. And that's pretty, pretty common uh, because I'm on a portable station. Mine's set up to dash three because it's my it's my portable. I'm carrying it all around. Um, if I go, if I go here to my gateway, you can see here's how I've got that one set up. Go to settings. VARA setup, it's right there, just W6H-4. And that essentially turns your machine into a digipeter. It allows them, as long as your radio's on, everything's connected and wired up, it allows that traffic to be able to, to pass through to another station. So, And uh, your pizza message has been received, and we have replied. You have replied. Excellent. So yes. Isn't that and, fast? And and Mike had some comments about the Digipeter numbers when, when we're ready to switch over there. Awesome. Uh, so let me come up here. I'm going to Digipeter. Let me see if I can get that via Dan because, uh, well, I'm not going to get greedy. I'm just going to go ahead and try spread. it. Try it. Try it. I'm going to just start. Try it. The, oh, it says channel's busy. I don't see anything. There it goes. So that traffic's going out. And if the demo gods are with us, it should come back and say, hey, here's the way that you can do this. It should be an S tier. Oh, there's one. Pizza. Pizza. I sent pizza to WA1 URS also sent in a check in from Bangor, Maine. Love Bangor, it's a nice town. There was a restaurant I was at in Bangor for a, when I was there for a conference. Um, I want to say it was called the Orinoco. Is that right? Is that is that the name of the, the one of the restaurants that's that's there? Go ahead and put that in the chat. I think that's right. Yeah, David, you do have to have your computer on. <clears throat> Someone was asking, do you have to have your computer on for this to work for a yes. client station? Yes, you do. Computer's doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. Receive it. Ooh, that's a really good. Look at that. Yeah, they're they're, the, they're closed now. Cluster that's coming in. Or, or Orinoco's closed now. The Orinoco's closed. Oh. They used to you used to bring out your beer in like a boot, a big glass boot. <laughs> it was a, it was an experience. Uh, okay, there we go. So I got the message. 
and uh, it looks like it it ended. Let me just close that session altogether. And well, you have to look at what's coming I gotta, your I way. I got to look and let's see. Oh, look at that. KK60A sent back pizza. An I, extra, I, extra I, large double deep dish pizza is on its way to you. All right. Wait, wait, but go but go, go down because there was an attachment as well. Oh, no. I attached something. Maybe you it didn't come something? for me. Uh-oh. You sent somebody, it. Somebody ate it. Oh, somebody ate it. <laughs> This happens when you digipete. It's out there so in the Twitter sphere. Uh, Mike, you, you've got some some ideas here on uh, some other information for us. What you got? Well, it's done an idea. In chat, someone was asking, you have to use dash four and dash 10. I'm going to enter an area that's going to upset your apple cart. I'm not sure if you really want me to. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll deal with it. In the early days of... Of Winlink and Packet Radio, there was this desire to follow how the APRS people were doing. And all of a sudden, number guy, station number one decided he's dash 10. So everybody followed and put dash 10 because it looked cute on all the lists. Da, 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 that was it. Bear FM comes along. You don't have to have any dashes after your call to be a DigiPeter. For example, bring up, bring up your uh, Bring up your Vera FM setting. For on my client or on my gateway? Your gateway. Bring up for your gateway. Okay. Here's my gateway. And I'm going to come up here to settings and Vara setup. Okay. What is your gateway called? My gateway is W6AH-4 on the Digipeter and my gateways. No. Why are you using dash 4? Why don't you use just W6AH? And I'm the only reason I'm using dash four is because by convention here in the county I operate, that's how the whole team operates. Ah, there we therein lies the rub. Therein lies the big, rub. Big confusion. If you go on the Winley website and go look at their maps, people can only see W6AH. They don't see a digipeter. So right. How, so how do they know? But if they if you're just using just your call sign, everybody can be a digipeter. You don't have to be dash four dash in. It's only local convention for set. The only time you need to use an SSID on the same call is if you have multiple stations in that same base call sign. Yeah. So for instance, David uh, W0DHG, he's got three gateways that he's operating on, on, the same on the same frequency. On the same frequency. Yeah. That's the only reason to use SSIDs. But if you're an individual homeowner, like for example, all our gateways on this on this side of the world don't use any SSID. If you go to the one at Cardinus, XC2BNC-9 is the gateway. If you want to digipeat for FM, it's XC2BNC-9. It's the same call. It eliminates all the confusion. If you go to my station at home, I'm in 6KZB. I have no SSID. Gateway is active. Uh, did, excuse me, DigiPeaks active? I'm in 6KZB. It takes all the guesswork out of it. I just wanted to throw it out there. Conventions are wonderful. You guys are happy. Go for it. But no one else in the world has to do that. Correct. I, you know, I, I think we push back. I think we need to have standards. <laughs> I agree. I think that we need to figure out what those standards are because I am still thoroughly confused. <laughs> You're still thoroughly confused. Anyhow, I hope that answers the chat question. Why dash four dash ten? It's just local convention. It's unless, local convention. Unless you have multiple gateways on the same frequency, but you don't have to do it if you don't want to. It it really, really, really more than anything, it comes down to you have to you have to test. You got to test in your local area. How you know what do you will you get your message through, and how do you need to to do that? So um, in in the case of of my testing, the way that we usually test that is just use Vara FM is a great way to be able to test it. Uh, you can you can look up on the you can look up on that Winlink map. You can see what the gateways are for Vara that you're that are in your area. And as Mike was pointing out, 
If I hover over mine, well, there you go. Mine's saying my gateway is dash 10. Which means, which means to me that your Digipeter should also be dash 10. And that's the part that... Um, that's the part that's confusing. Yeah, well, very confusing. But you got to make sure that you've got those, pl those numbers that plug in right. Click, um, on, click on another one. Another, another, pick one another, of mine. Okay. What's your gateway called? My gateway is dash 10. Okay. And what are you using for a digipeter call? Dash 10. Excellent. Now you go to the map, you only see NR6V-10. And if you want to digipeat, you know it's NR6V-10. That's the only time you get the listings to match up. Mm. It's always been a with me. No one else cares, and I don't care. Either. I care. I care. I think we should we should have a conference on this. I think we should definitely try and pull some more people in because it, it is it is definitely confusing. This is when we first started trying to transmit traffic between Ventura County and Los Angeles County. We ran into this problem. Like, how do we find out what the digipeters are? And I literally had to call somebody and say, "Hey, how come this isn't working? Are you running a digipeter?" And they went, "Oh yeah, all of our digipeters are all dash four." like oh and once you do once i knew that boom it works great you just have to know by convention that that's the that that's the direction um that that folks are are doing this in um somebody's saying i use sound modem only but no digipeating gotcha okay um sound modem digipedes sound modem did you do you want to demonstrate that dan um or david i'm not really set up to do it okay but I, it, I can do it if you want yeah, yeah go ahead so this would be packet digipeating let me uh find which mouse i'm trying to connect to here mm. by the by the way digipeating works for peer-to-peer -peer as well so if your area all the internet's out but you need to need to get a message to the EOC, for example, and you can't reach the EOC directly, but there's an intermediate station that can get both you and the EOC. You can digipete through that and do a peer to peer connection uh, with the EOC, which if I were running things, I would just set the EOC up on a peer to peer session and leave it open and let people contact me as they need to. Comment. Go ahead. You just proved my point. If you have four stations in a valley and they're all home stations and they're all just using their base call, they're just users, adding dash four and dash 10 just confuses the shit out of everything. If they all just use their base call as a digipeter, then they're gonna then they're gonna be know what it is. I heard that, Mike. That's a good point. <laughs> You're guilty, I'm guilty. And and that and that's the part that I keep struggling with too. You guys can see my screen. Yeah, we can. So um, I've got packet open, and you can see there's plenty of stuff going here. And the last time I did uh, packet digipeating, I went from Dan to Chris. I don't think this is going to work, but yeah, it's who not knows? Work now because I don't have uh, I don't have yeah. some of them up. But way. I could, but I could do. Um, Who's got who else? Dan to David. KK6 or Orf. Or Orf. Oh, yeah. Orf. Or, does Orf have packet up? I think so. Or, Orf is probably yeah. going to follow the dash four convention. Well, he's the endpoint. Oh, he's the endpoint. Okay. He'd be the endpoint because I was going to go through Dan because Dan, you're set up as 10, right? Yes. So I'm going to just, we're going to throw caution in the wind and see what happens here. But I'm going to try, try to digipete from Dan to Orv. And of course, we got nothing. Actually, let's just try direct to Dan first to see if it'll work. Your uh, screen resolution is pretty high. Too. Yeah, I'm sorry. And pull your uh, pull your sound modem window down just a little bit because uh, Zoom has your uh, little tile sitting right over your got it yeah it's so game. so yeah. here's dan here's dan direct um what i could do hold on i could do this what i could do is when i stop this um of course i could digipete 
through because I'm on the inside station. I could actually digipete through my actual gateway. We'll try that again because I think this part will work. So again, I'm going from the inside station and you're not transferring. What's thinking about it? Oh, it's your WinLink session window that has to come down further to be so we can see all of it. It's being hidden a little bit. There you go. Hmm. Yeah. We didn't try this ahead of time, but even if we had, usually when we do these things ahead of time, they don't work when we're trying to demo. Propagation shifts around, yeah. So it's a lot of kind of like trial and error to figure out some of these things sometimes. Like I yeah. said, this morning on the Simplex net, uh, our, our propagation was about as bad as I've ever seen it. Yeah, right now, right now things are not awesome here. So for whatever reason, I can't, I can't connect to you there. I went and looked at the garage. The the gateway actually looks fine, but for whatever reason, we're no go. Stuart is asking in the chat: Is anyone running dual packet and Vara FM on the same FM channel concurrently? Yes. Between packet and Vara FM. Yes. Some some people do that. Our, so yeah, our, I, our I, I can actually show that. you that. So, and I know the resolution is not what you want to see here really hard to see yeah um uh here let me stop share and see if i can do it on the other screen sorry um this screen is this better and we're just seeing your background in dual <laughs> mode it's that not is better they do not play how well. about now how about now is this better yes yeah, that's better okay so this is my gateway and my gateway is running packet uh, the, the RMS packet, and I have both packet and VARA running here concurrently. And that's what the RMS packet software allows you to do. You just, you just have to put them in, uh, you have to change your uh, ports so they don't share ports. Right, exactly. And I, and I just, for convenience, I put them in a separate folder as well. I don't know that you have to do that. And I don't know, for whatever reason, probably my radio is probably burning my garage down right now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the struggles of the rim board. Yeah, it was stuck on? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to go. Actually, I'm going to go out and run and look. It was stuck on yesterday. Oh, dear. I'll be back. Yeah. All right. Take, cool. take the fire extinguisher. Right. <laughs> um, let's see if there, uh, if there are any questions uh, in the chat that other ha other folks have uh, about this, I know this is uh, kind of confusing. Um, let me show you actually on the map again what we were what we were trying to demonstrate. I guess it would help if I use the correct mouse. There we are. Uh, so I come down here. So I'm again out here <laughs> in Ventura. That's my gateway that I'm at, and that's my dash ten is the is the gateway. But let's say. I can hit Rob just fine from my house, but let's say I'm down here on the beach. There's the Santa Monica mountains that rise up right here. And from this location, right down in here, I cannot hit Rob at all, but I can hit my station that's here at my, my home QTH. So I can digipete from my portable station out to this gateway, have it send its connection and signal over to Rob's who may have an internet connection. If he yeah, doesn't, add we're, on yeah, Chris, we're, we're seeing David still. Can oh, because he's sharing it. His share. Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Hang on. And then we'll Thank spotlight you, for, you. Thanks for yelling at that. And while you're doing that, let me relay a story of an exercise where we use this quite effectively. And it was just by chance. And Mike, it involves one of your Tijuana gateways. So we were doing um, a uh, find a place in a, in a park type exercise, and uh, we passed a whole lot of traffic over four to five hours. I was on a high point in Los Angeles in a park called Elysian Park. It's very near Dodger Stadium, but it sits 
several hundred feet above the stadium, so it's quite a perch. And we were just trying to see who we could hit on the list. And uh, I had a beautiful signal from Los Angeles to Tijuana. It was just amazing. So we decided to do all of our checkouts through my station, Dash 4, to the gateway in Tijuana. And that was great fun. <laughs> so uh, it can be done. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing to see. So here's the, now you should be able to see the map uh, a little yes. better now. Thank you. Let me, uh, let me pull David down here, remove spotlight. There you go. So let's say Sorry. I was out here. Let's say I was out here on the beach or I was somewhere over in, over in this area because the Santa Monica mountains take off right here. We would not be able to get up to, to Rob's gateway. This is Rob's gateway right here. Um, David again is down here. Dan is over at this pin. So from, from some location down in here, I may be able to hit my gateway, but I would have to digipete out to Rob or maybe even do another hop over to Dan or down here to, to, to David in order to get that traffic out. And likewise, in the event that there's a, a big earthquake down here in Los Angeles, maybe these guys need to get their traffic bounced out to, to David, out to Rob, and then all the way out to me who may have an internet connection. So that's, it's a way to, to extend out your network and be able to, to make it so that you can get your traffic through, get the message through however you need to. Uh, DHG, are you uh, set up with your demo? Is that working now? No, I'm seeing a shaking head. No, not working. All right. Well, there we go. Well, that's, uh, that is the, uh, the roll through of, um, of digipeating. Um, Dan, David, David, anything else to add to that? We can bring up the map here in just a minute. Well, it's, it's not difficult to set up a, a radio. I have a, a ammo can with a radio, a digi rig, uh, sound card, um, a speaker and uh, a connection out to my uh, computer. And I can set that up as a digipeter in any place that I want to set it. So uh, with a battery and, and a computer. So in a disaster, uh, you may not have a existing station that does what you need to but it's not difficult to set up something as a digipeter or a gateway for that matter. Hey, hey, Dan, is your packet gateway set up? Cause yes. I can hit, I can hit mine, but I can't hit yours. That's why I can't do the demo. Okay. Well, it, maybe, uh, maybe I'm not uh, running again. Let me uh, road into it. Yeah, Chris, now, now I'm downloading uh, 20 messages. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> including, including the pizza picture. Chris, uh, Keith is asking, how do you configure sound modem to allow digipeding? Even though you can't transmit, you want to show that again? Or David, maybe you yeah, could? Yeah, David, let's, let's go ahead and uh, show that. It's pretty much like VARA. It looks like that. It's just not VARA. It's sound modem. Right. You want me to show it? Yeah, if you can show it. I, I don't have it set up on my... Uh... I don't, I'm not sure I can show it. Oh, hold on one sec. I can. Yeah, you did a minute ago. So... I'm seeing you... Uh... <laughs> connect through through my gateway. Okay, so yeah, there we go. here is my... No, is that the right screen? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's sound yeah. modem. So... Sorry, it's talking right now. I can't make any changes. <laughs> the joys of running a... Uh... I, I am talking back to you. Are you not receiving me? Nope. Okay. I think we're having a pretty major solar thing. I'm looking at 10 meters. It's completely dead. Okay, now I think it stopped. So this is my gateway... And when you talk about the packet setup stuff, um, I'm not showing you what you want to see. What do you want to see? You want to see the... Just, just in, in sound modem, how do you set it up to digipeat? You got to put it in digipeat, and then you got to put some call signs in. 
Oh, sorry. Okay. I so thought I'm it gonna... was set up that way by default. Yeah, it, it is. I don't um, think it is. I think it's an I and I hack. Yeah, your, your mic's right. So what you need to do is go in here. You can still see my screen? Yes. Yeah. And you have to go into... Sorry, I'm going to back into this. This is the part of the uh, setting that wasn't um, planned in the RMS Express. You'll see I have sound modem somewhere here. Nope. Where is it? By oh. default, sound modem is off. Route. And then in, as Mike said, in the INI file. Oh, that. Yeah. There is going to be a. Um, just faster to do it this way. Oh, but I can't find it. In here, there is a setting. I I've totally it. forgotten about doing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and this is my client station, so I'm in the. I'm even in the wrong. Sorry, I'm in the wrong computer here. This is the problem of having six computers connected here. <laughs> uh, desktop touch, and. Bring this down, drag it over here. Now you can see this computer. And now in this computer. I'll be right back. Yep. Uh, We're going to look at RMS Express and we're going to go find the sound modem, I and I, and then somewhere in here, there is a line where you set up my, look, I did it. <laughs> Yay. Where you set up the DigiPeter call as your call dash for, and that's what I was told to do. Right. Early on when we did it. Yep. <laughs> and and but we're um, not seeing your screen. You you can't? No, we're seeing you. you. You're we're kidding. seeing you. No. Oh. <clears throat> hey uh DA, check your text messages. Yeah, you sent me one that says yo. <laughs> oh, something else. All right. Here it is. Can you see it now? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There we go. And here's where you set. There is a section here in the configuration for sound modem. If you want to be a DigiPeter to put in in the my Digi call, you put in your call sign dash four. And I and thank you, Mike, for helping me understand that the struggle that I have with the dash four versus dash ten or eleven or twelve is a real thing. So. <laughs> And with that, I'm going to send it back to Chris. Did you get pizza, Chris? I I did. I sent you. I sent extra, you a picture. Extra large. I yeah. sent you. No, mine was extra extra small. And because <laughs> I had to compress it to get it under the size for get it all in there. So yeah. so um, as we uh, as we start to wrap this up, uh, one of the we're I think we're going to try and do a live demo of something that was completely not planned because. It turns out I used my Surface all weekend long and I didn't have it on a charger. And so it just went out of battery power. Did that little battery fail? It finally, it finally <laughs> went out of battery <laughs> power. A, I, get I, I a don't have, battery. Get a I don't have battery. any idea where my where my charger is right now for it. Um, so David, uh, KK68, can you uh, share your screen and bring up the map? Yeah, because I I do you that. got all the check-ins as well as, as I did. So we're going to... We're going to show how that actually uh, plays out here. So those are the check-ins that uh, came in. Do you have it? Do you have your filters? What's your filter set to? I think it's three hours, but hang on. It's Let me enough. try to. Uh, where's the little plus and minus on the? It's up in the top. It's uh, zoom in and out. Top left. Uh, oh, zoom in and out. Let's Top left. Out. There you go. There you go. Zoom out. We can see the pins. And then set the filter to see what the 
the race uh, time is. Yeah, and we gotta go. We gotta go all the way out to the whole world. Three, four, four hours. hours. So good enough. Hey. Keep zooming out, because you're only looking at North America right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep going. Keep on going. Look I at that. There's New Zealand. There's New Zealand. There's Hawaii, the Germany. That's awesome. Hello, GHR. Hello, HOG. U U, Aloha, and Mahalo. And let's see who else. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Let's see who is in Iowa. Hello, CBV and Wisconsin, RKM. We're sending you spring weather, not winter weather. You're pretty tired of that right now, I'm sure. And here is our Bangor station. Bunch of them in Northern California. FIQ. What is so neat about this, and Mike, thank you for your work in the Windlink development team. Uh, you can get all of this information with a single click on one of those pins. Now, you know, this is personal information, but you can see the power of this if this was a spot rep report. And you were asking, do you have internet? Do you have AC power? Do you have water? And that's a whole nother one. Chris, I, I know we can change the colors on this. Uh, yeah. This, this indicates uh, that's, I don't know who that is, but uh, there we go. Uh, and I, I'm just not skilled enough to do that quickly enough, but that's, uh, that's the map. Cool, David. Can you run? Can you run a check one more time? See if any more check-ins came in. There's a couple of people that are either not showing up on the map or um, they didn't check in with David. That we're not. Yeah, they may not have sent their the uh, check into all all four of us, um, or might have gotten a call sign wrong. So let's do another check. See if anyone else comes in. And uh, David, the reason that uh, your efforts failed was I did not have my sound on them set up right oh look at that it is set up correctly now so i i only feel a little better that it wasn't me <laughs> even though they it was know. not you it just was saying me. roy we appreciate you being here uh no worries about uh not being able to check in with the with the actual form and there you go. Uh, john we clearly need to figure out what's going on with your win link because you're not showing up on david's map maybe anymore. maybe we should ask mike yeah well, let's let's take that up in the as the first thing in the uh, yeah. in the after party. Okay, there. very good. Let's, we we've come up to the top of the hour. We're going to try and wrap this up on on time this week instead of going for two and three and four hours. So, uh, uh, DHG, any any closing thoughts you got for us? I, I was just going to say that I have another two acres of lawn to mow, so I was hoping we'd have another. <laughs> <laughs> no, that it's all good. You know. Um, I, I just say, you know, set it up, test it, play with it. Um, it's been a fun journey. The three gateways that I have set up from mostly from, you know, crap from my garage has been very rewarding. And I know that, you know, Dan, Dan got the bug before I did. And Chris has got the bug too. And pretty soon David will have it. I have the bug. You have the bug. That's good. <laughs> yep. I just want and, to do something unique. Uh, oh, you're gonna go. I bet you. I know where you're gonna go, and I don't want to. Well, I, mean, I don't want to spoil I, it. I want to put it on. I don't want to share it. Right. I want to put it yeah. on Starlink. Well, I Ooh. don't know. I could do that too. And yeah, I, and I like. I like one. Chris's. I like Chris's little tease of the not sharing the, <laughs> the the big news. And um, but anyways, that that's it for me. And uh, just thanks all for tuning in. I think I want you all to tell your friends and neighbors and other hams that I hope, and we've been talking about this for two months now, we're going to reboot the show and start from scratch for those that want to get up and running soon-ish. Maybe summertime. Maybe summertime. Yep. Summertime, summertime. I would That's say it for me, that back to net control. That oh, sorry, this, this is a great exercise and you know, you can set it up knowing which direction you're going to go. 
or you could set it up with 15 amateurs all capable of doing this and pull one station into the exercise as the digipeating station or uh, try to find a, a close but not so close that you can't get them by digipeating and make that a project. So it's, you know, it's a whole lot better than just doing check-ins. It's, uh, it's fun and it has a very practical use uh, in the big one, which we all prepare for, especially since I'm sitting on the Hollywood fault as we speak. <laughs> Bill has a good suggestion. What about packet scripts for digipeating? That's, a, that's an interesting topic to, to look at as a way to be able to do that. I'm not... I'm not sure how we would do that. That would probably have to kick over to to Goldenberg to help with on on how to pull that off. Yeah. Yeah. I, when you say scripts, I'm not really sure. I mean, there there are the. Oh, there you go. Mike's, Mike's got it. Mike's got it. Packet. It's in the help. It's in the help files. There is a we'll, wealth we'll wealth of knowledge in the help files and in the um, the recipe book. We should all be reading it. Yeah. Dan, any closing thoughts from you? No, other than digipeating is really powerful and uh, in a disaster, even more important because the gateways may be down, but we can always set up something temporary to fill the void. Definitely. Um, I, I know when I first started getting into, into doing this, it, it was, it was really hard for me to wrap my brains around how to actually pull it off. Um, and I think a lot of that confusion came from, you know, I live inside of an area that has one convention and these guys all live inside of an area that has a slightly different convention. And then there's there's all these the, the different ways that it works. So you really do have to test it, test, test, test and constantly check. Um, I was I was at a I was at an event recently and uh, we, we spent all day working on this system, getting everything tweaking locally. But until we took that system and we put it on the air and we were able to successfully send traffic, we had not fully tested that, that system to make sure that it would work, to make sure that that traffic would go the way that we wanted to. And so I, I would certainly encourage everybody to constantly get your radio out, get your computer out, get them plugged in, test the gateways that you can hit, test the different modes that you can use, that you can operate with, whether it be packet, Vara FM, uh, whether it be digipeding, peer-to-peer, HF, you know, what, whatever you got, uh, just keep practicing and, and testing it and test it on a regular basis. So uh, when, you, when you need to pass that traffic, you're confident that you can do it. So with that, uh, I think we will we will wrap this up for today. Um, we'll, we'll if you're you're here inside of the Zoom, go ahead and hang around. Uh, we'll we'll do the after party. We'll take some we'll take some questions there. Uh, but in the meantime, if you're on LinkedIn, thank you for very much for for joining us. We're going to go ahead and uh, close off there. We're going to take. Um, what is this, Facebook? We'll take Facebook down. Thank you very much for joining us. For those of you who are watching on Facebook and for those of you watching on YouTube, thanks a lot for joining us on YouTube and uh, we'll see you next week.